All right, how's it going, everyone? Um, getting tired? Ready, ready to go to the bar? Just hang in there, we're almost there. Okay, so I'm just going to run you through uh, what's coming up in Nuke um, in the summer. Uh, Nuke 6.2 just released, so this is Nuke 6.3, which will be out um, in a few months. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak preview of some of these features that are listed here. Um, but bear in mind it is seriously early days, sneak preview. You know, it's not going to look exactly like this when you get it because we're still a few months away. Uh, but you, know, you guys want to show you just a little bit of what we're up to. Uh, so number one on the list, I can't show you this yet, but um, it's going to be great. This is a new approved one. <laughs> Redoing the spine water and the grid water. Uh, so you'll, have, you know, you'll be able to access all the information from the curve editor, see lists of curves, um, you know, track uh, points and so on. Uh, we're also taking inspiration from the Mari Warper, you know, sort of the Mari Warper all uh, early on. We're going to kind of take some inspiration from that and make the UI kind of nice. Uh, 3D particles, I will show you a sneak peek. Peacock. And also this sneak peek. Um, denoise. So um, Emmy from our research team has been working hard on the uh, denoise algorithm to replace our uh, age and degrain. From Furnace, and that's going really well. It's uh, out of a few places. We've got it in this room, I think, for Alpha, and I think it's uh, going really well, um, comparable with Meat. <laughs> but it runs on all platforms. Uh, decompositing. Uh, the latest and greatest thing in decompositing. Uh, I'll show you a bit of that. Uh, speed, we're working on faster playback and, and more caching. So, uh, stuff like we've unified the disk cache and the viewer cache, so whatever you use in the viewer will be usable by the disk cache. Um, also, uh, keeping caches around in between frames as well. Like, I don't know if you know, but when you switch frames, and you typically it throws away a lot of the in-memory caches, so we'll be keeping those. Um, and other things like pre-filling the, the viewer playback cache uh, before you press play, so make it faster. Um, audio scratch track as well, just for lining up your elements. You'll be able to uh, attach things to it in the curve editor and see the waveform so you can just you know, match your uh, elements to your, your sound effects. Um, on the developer side, we're working on this uh, LGPU, uh, LGPL QT 4.6. Uh, so what, what that's going to mean is it'll give you access to the QT uh, widgets directly from inside you. So now if you do like PyQT, it typically has to be like a separate window. But this will allow you to uh, write PyQT directly inside you. So widgets inside panels. Um, new from PyQt, and the same thing with C++. So, if you're writing uh, nodes, you can start putting in whatever widgets you want, and spreadsheets, and whatever. Knock yourself out. Uh, we're doing some <coughs> GPU work as well. We we have like a GPU uh, framework we call Blink. Um, so we're starting to move some of the plugins to that framework. So one of them is uh, Chronos, our retimer. So that will be in Nuke 6.3. Um, we're actually working on the Denoise as well, doing a a, a version of that will run on the GPU to make it faster. Um, and the other thing is Ocular 3, which Simon didn't want to talk about, because he wants to be cagey about when it's going to be released. But we are working on that for the GPU too. And uh, finally on this list, uh, we, did a, we did a survey quite a few months ago where we, we kind of said, uh, do you want to have a master class with developers where we go out and give you classes and teach you about how to be a developer? And overwhelmingly the survey said, no, just give this a, a better user guide, <laughs> better manual. So, so we're working on that. <laughs> yeah, so we're working on a developer's guide. So this is um, across the range from Python to uh, C++. So there's already examples in the NDK for like 2D plugins. Uh, but we're going to have more examples for all of the core kind of um, concepts and have them annotated by each one of the developers to explain you know, what, what is happening at each stage of those plugins. So that, for the 2D side, we're doing that. Also the 3D side. So I don't know if you've seen the, the manual in the 3D side that says there should be more information here. <laughs> we're going to remove that line and actually put some more information. Um, and the same thing on the Python side. So we have lots of examples and you know the common things like uh, custom read nodes and uh, hooking into the asset management systems and, and that sort of thing. So have lots of examples, but then explain why the example does what it does. As I said before, this, this is... Seriously, the early days for this stuff, so um, as you look through these examples, they're quite um, quite engineering kind of heavy. <laughs> so the first thing I want to show you is, uh, does everyone know what deep compositing is? 
Is that like no? <laughs> okay, so what it's basically saying is, is um, so when you, when you do your 3D render, uh, there's, there's, there's a process in there that does a Z compositing, which gets all the layers and composites together into a final image. Um, and I like to think of this as deferring that process to the compositor. So instead of combining all those layers together, where we're leaving them split out into the separate layers and then pulling that into the compositor and then be able to use that information to do, to do more things. So you get multiple samples per pixel. Um, so that allows you to do stuff like, uh, for instance, uh, render a volumetric type effect. And instead of rendering a holdout for the, the character you're going to copy in there later, you can just render the entire effect without the holdout and then generate the holdout later in, in the composite. That's kind of the idea. Uh, and there's other things you can do with it. Uh, so I'll just show you an example. Uh, the first example is, is showing you uh, our scanline render it natively creating deep data. So what we have, this is what I'm talking about when it's engineering. We have two, two kind of Earths <coughs> in the 3D space um, intersecting like you would do in real life. <laughs> um, and then I've rendered that out and then we've got a, uh, you know, a picture for that giving us the, the, the render out the scanline render. But if I look at this, under the hood, there's actually more data here than um, is apparent just by looking at the scanline renderer. So if I move this little doozy around here, you can see on the, on the right-hand side there, there's a bunch of numbers coming up. So what that's actually saying is that each one of these points, there's more than one sample. So this point over here, there's a sample for the front of the Earth and a sample for the back. And if I move it further across to here, where the Earths are kind of fused together, there's four samples. So two pairs of front and backs, one for each. Um, of the Earths. So you can see this multiple. So what, what can we do with this? Well, one kind of experimental node we've got here is, is a color correct that acts on uh, with the Z mask. So I can actually kind of pull this slider up and down, and you can see that it's color correcting the front <coughs> different to the back one. And the in interesting thing to keep in mind with this is it's not just like making a, um, a map on the front and affecting the 2D image, it's actually color correcting those separate pixels and then recombining them back together to, to form the 2D image. So it's, it's a node-based system, so um, you kind of have a middle node and then you have a bunch of different force nodes that act on the particles. Um, so I'm just going to show you a kind of basic setup of how you would set them up. And then I'll show you some nice examples that uh, Matt really has uh, put together. Uh, sort of form. So, basic idea is we have the, uh, a middle node here, and then we have uh, something, uh, a representation, in this case it's um, this image of, of a particle. And then we have something to emit off, in this case it's a sphere. So if I hit play on that, hit play on that, you can see we have this kind of global effect. Um, and there's lots of different settings here in the, in the emitter node. I'm not going to go into all the details, so I'll just quickly run over them. So at the moment we're you know, emitting 295 particles per frame. We're emitting from faces randomly. You, you have choices of edges and points and so on. Um, and we have all of these kind of modifiers as well to, to modulate the, uh, the different uh, attributes here. So we can modulate by you know, random amounts, or we can even take an input channel and then use that to change the, the emission rates and so on. So there's different, different options there. Um, so I'll just let that emit from here. Um, here's, a, here's a candle. Can I have a particle demo without a flame? So I'm going to get a flame and stuff. Um, what else do we have? Oh, I like this one. So this is kind of... Um, just showing it's emit, uh, emitting off um, more animated geometry. So we've got this kind of thing spinning around there. And then applying some, um, some particles to emit from there. And there's a bit of a bug in this version where the particles don't update the way it's So that's uh, so kind of a Catherine wheel effect. Okay, so let's play my track now. So the first application I'm going to show you for this is, is just doing a roto and then trying to track that across the plane. So we've got a uh, kind of moving thing here of a, a tank. So what I'm going to do is, is roto the first, first frame here really poorly. But give you an idea. 
here, just to kind of puff out the surface there. And then uh, just track that. So the planar tracker kind of uses the same technology as the camera tracker. It tries to do an auto feature detect to, to find the uh, features and then track it through. So you can see there, straight away, I've already tracked that um, on the plane and applied that to the tank. You can see it tracking through. And it's really easy just to add on the plane.